It's been several weeks since Wanderer's release, and since then I've seen all kinds of opinions regarding him. For the most part, the community's reception has been turbulent, as I've seen many people disappointed with his damage, comparing him to damage-dealing characters widely seen as below average, like Klee or Heizu. Most importantly, many saw him as inferior to his direct competitor within the Anemo damage-dealing niche, namely Xiao. This didn't match what me and most other theory crafters came up with in pre-release phase, as he was calculated to be an overall great character in terms of personal damage and the damage of his teams as well. In this video, I'll analyze why some people are experiencing underwhelming results if compared to the expectations, while trying to remain as unbiased as possible with my personal estimation of his value. Let's get straight into it. First of all, to understand why your Wanderer might have disappointed you, it's important to learn how damage distribution works in Genshin Impact. By damage distribution, I'm referring to how the damage of your whole team is distributed between all of its characters. Depending on that factor, your level of investment on a specific character might be more or less impactful for the entirety of your team results. For example, let's take a team where the entirety of the damage is rather evenly distributed among its playable characters, like Yae Quicken. As you can see, Yae and Fischl are doing most of the damage here, but individually, they're carrying a smaller load than your typical hypercarry, as the team setup is meant to magnify both of their outputs equally. Usually, all quick swap teams work like this, and they're generally regarded as free to play friendly, since it's easy to get good team damage results even at free to play level of investment with them. To prove that, let's take away 10% of Yae's personal damage from the equation. Since Yae accounts for just 42% of the team's damage, a 10% decrease for her output is just a 4.2 decrease for the team's damage, which in the big scheme of things might be completely irrelevant. Now, let's use one of Wanderer's best team setups as an example, which is Hyper Carry with Layla, a composition that mixes great buffs from your supports with strong defensive utility from Layla to create a great overall team balance. In this team composition, Wanderer is responsible for 87% of the team's damage, since the team is filled with supports whose entire offensive role is magnifying Wanderer's personal damage output as much as possible. Most of Wanderer's best teams are like this, while compositions that focus on sub-DPS damage are generally weaker from a damage calculation perspective, since they just don't take advantage of Wanderer's strengths properly. So, let's see what happens if you take away 10% of Wanderer's personal damage output in this composition. The result is that the team's damage per rotation decreases by 8.7%, which is more than double of what the Quicken team I've shown before lost by decreasing Yae's personal damage output by the same amount. What I'm trying to say here is that when you use a hypercarry team, the level of investment you have on your main damage dealer is extremely important. Still, there are levels to this. In fact, Wanderer is rather unique, even when compared to other main damage dealers, as his damage contribution in his hypercarry teams is one of the highest in the whole game. The reason is easy to highlight. Other teams have access to supports that still somewhat contribute nicely to the team's damage by themselves, like Kazuha does in most elemental teams, or Albedo does on Itto teams for example. In comparison, Bennett and Farzan practically deal no damage on Wanderer teams, and while Kazuha can be used, 
and triple anemo compositions are good in general thanks to the utility generated by the additional grouping, he's just a traditional sub-DPS on Wanderer teams, and not a support like he can be on other elemental teams. As a result, investing on Wanderer matters more than investing on most other hyper carries in the game, with Xiao being the only one to reach his same heights in terms of damage contribution in his team, which is logical since they fit the same niche. However, Xiao is in a much more favorable position at this point of the game, for a quite obvious reason. He's been out for more than a year. This means that on average, most people's Xiaos have considerably better builds than most people's Wanderers, as the latter came to the game with a brand new artifact set that's considerably stronger than all other options, a signature weapon that towers over all other alternatives, and talent levels locked behind relatively new materials. Lacking any of these things will have a significant negative impact on your Wanderer's personal damage output, and as I've explained earlier, his teams take a huge hit from that. This isn't even considering Ferruzan's Constellation 6, which everybody rightfully considers a huge buff. Of course, this is a flaw for him, as being more restrictive than other characters when it comes to build level is a factor that penalizes its overall value, but at this point we have to accept that this is just what it is. Being so relevant in terms of personal damage contribution for the team is a double-edged sword not only in terms of how important your Wanderer's investment level is, but also in terms of how much margin for error you have in real gameplay situations. By this, I mean that even the smallest mistake can result in a massive damage loss. Based on my experience with Wanderer, the most common mistakes that can happen with him are bad positioning, which can result in getting staggered by mobs, and mismanagement of the team's energy generation. The latter is easier to pinpoint as a structural issue for Wanderer, since most of his teams require huge energy recharge investment on his supports, and one or two Fahonius weapons on team as well. In practice, your Wanderer hyper carry team is running on thin ice for the whole time, as a basic particles mismanagement, or even a realistic miss of a Fahonius proc can ruin your whole energy economy for the next rotation, and basically cause you to waste 5 to 10 seconds to recover. This is not much of a Wanderer issue specifically, but rather something hypercarries with long field time, who benefit from a cast of multi-elemental supports have to deal with in general. An exception to this is Raiden Hypercarry, as Raiden's energy refund can compensate for the lack of a battery for his supports even on a completely multi-elemental team, something that makes the rotation extremely consistent. In comparison, Wanderer Hypercarry feels pretty much like a Raiden Hypercarry team without the energy refund, as their rotations are extremely similar in length and their supports have similar energy requirements. But even excluding all of this, one of Wanderer's faults in terms of gameplay is that most of his teams have very basic functioning with no gameplay altering utility. Compare it to Freeze teams, who can stunlock multiple enemies in a single spot and simultaneously deal massive damage to all of them, and even somebody like Ayaka who in some variants of the team accounts for 70% of the team damage, will rely less on investment than somebody like Wanderer, since that level of utility will make her save a lot of time in terms of a base clear speed. That said, Wanderer does have some nice things going for him, as he basically feels like a bow user with his out attacks, while having better auto-tracking mechanics and wider range. 
he can pretty much stand in a single spot during a whole run and hit all the enemies regardless of where they spawn, which saves him time compared to melee hyper carries that have to move around if another wave spawns on the other side of the stage, resulting in a complete loss of their remaining rotation damage. Still, since he lacks big ways to alter the gameplay on most of his teams, having high investment on him becomes even more important. There is an exception, however, which is Triple Anema with Kazuha. This team can outspeed even Wanderer hypercarry teams that have higher theoretical damage potential, simply thanks to Kazuha's grouping, which makes a base rooms with many mobs just much easier to deal with. In fact, as I've mentioned earlier, and also on videos I made during Wanderer's pre-release phase, Kazuha can be used as a standard sub-DPS with a critical based build to make him benefit from Bennett and Farusan's buffs. As a whole, Triple Anemo is a team that can maintain relatively high damage output, while adding some much needed utility and making the energy economy of the team feel less restrictive, since you're running 3 units that have the same element. Overall, if you listened to the whole video, I think you might have reached the same conclusion you will hear from me now. Wanderer is not a bad character, but he might be more restrictive than any of the characters you used before, so using the same standards you used for them to evaluate him might make him look bad in comparison. At his peak, Wanderer is not particularly worse than the previous calculation expected him to be, as his hypercarry teams have a lot of variants all of them being able to generate high damage as long as you have the core units needed to enable Wanderer. Still, his ceiling is harder to reach than it is maybe for any other unit in the history of Genshin. If you combine how restrictive he currently is in terms of build possibilities and the small margin of error he allows in real gameplay situations. I'm done for today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time!